We gather today on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation. May we dwell on this land with respect and peace. Welcome to worship in the parish of Mississippi Lake, a parish of the Anglican Diocese of Ottawa, firmly planted in and around Lanark County. Worship this week comes to you from St. James Carlton Place, led by Canon Christine Piper. The preacher is the Reverend Pat Blythe, who will read from Mark's Gospel and offer the sermon today. The prayers of the people are led by Helen Vandermay. Our musicians are Ian Gannett and Yvonne Kilpatrick, with production by myself, Archdeacon Brian Kauk. We listen now as God's Word is proclaimed among us. The Lord be with you, and also, also with, with you. you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, and the brother of J John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum which means, little girl, get up. 
and immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to, to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Last week, Canon Christine played the Song of the Sparrow beautifully on her violin. All I could ever play on the violin was Hark the Herald Angels Sing and my singing voice has all but disappeared. But I'd like to read you a few verses of an old hymn I learned when I was a curate many years ago. It fits beautifully with today's gospel, and I couldn't get it out of my head. So listen up. I will go dancing, I will go dancing, I will go dancing in my soul for I have touched the hem of his garment, and his power has made me whole. Sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia in my soul, for I have touched the hem of his garment, and his power has made me whole. What would you do if the phone rang, the dishwasher died, as ours did last week, your child called for help with his homework, and the oven buzzer went off all at the same time. Some people would say, welcome to my world. There are days like that, aren't there? And there were for Jesus, too. Everywhere Jesus went, his reputation preceded him. He often traveled by boat around the Sea of Galilee but people knew who he traveled with, what their boats looked like, and he was very quickly recognized among them. In today's gospel, Jesus again traveled by boat, and he was no sooner on shore than Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue, came rushing up to him. You see, the word had spread that Jesus was a healer, and Jairus, needed a healer. Already there was a crowd around Jesus. It must have felt like the phone was ringing, the child needed help with his homework, and the oven buzzer had just gone off. But as it is with any of us, because some was, someone was in need of help, Jesus' attention caught, was a caught immediately. With Jesus, there was no triage. He loved them all. Jairus, Jairus was the ruler of the synagogue and one of the most respected men in the community. But he needed help, and he came to Jesus. His daughter was gravely ill, and he was frantic. He would normally have been skeptical of Jesus, for he was upsetting the apple cart of orthodoxy. Yet he knew by Jesus' reputation he could trust him with his most precious gift, his daughter. And in his hour of need, he forgot his prejudices and his dignity and threw himself at Jesus' feet and begged him repeatedly to come and lay hands on her and make her well. Jesus immediately went with Jairus, but as he went, he was surrounded by an even larger crowd, and, and he was interrupted on his journey by another plea for help from another desperate person. The first line of today's psalm comes to mind, out of the depths have I called you, O Lord. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. Mark frequently composes stories 
in a sandwich form, meet, nesting one episode inside of another. And we are encouraged to think of today's story not as two episodes, but as one. The interruption on his way to Jairus' house was caused by a woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. She must have been a woman of wealth and status because she had spent all she had on physicians and potions and anything posed as a cure, but to no avail. She only became worse. She was considered unclean and a social outcast, not even able to breathe or wash her clothes in the river or worship at the temple. Not only was she considered unclean according to Leviticus, but everyone and anything she touched was deemed unclean. She was at her wit's end, lonely, ill, penniless, and desperate after enduring so much for so long. And she viewed Jesus as her last opportunity for healing. She truly believed he could heal her, but she didn't want to touch him and make him unclean. She knew she'd never get close enough to Jesus to be able to speak to him, but she trusted that he could help her and believed that if she could just touch his cloak, she would be healed. Her persistence and audacity were striking not only did she push through the crowd, but she also pushed through the words of Leviticus and reached out and touched Jesus' clothes. Watching and waiting, watching and waiting, watching and waiting in my soul, for I have touched the hem of his garment and his power has made me whole. Immediately, she felt healing spread through her body at the same time that Jesus felt power go out from him and asked, who touched my clothes? Because of the crowd, his disciples thought it a ridiculous question, yet he knew. The trembling woman fell at his feet and told him the truth. You'd think Jesus would have been angry at being interrupted on his way to Jairus' house, but he wasn't. Instead, he told her that her great faith had healed her and to go in peace. Sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia in my soul, for I have touched the hem of his garment and his power has made me whole. The story up to this point suggests that Jesus' power was the source of her healing, but Jesus draws attention not to his power, but to hers. As he approached Jairus' house, they were told that they were too late. They had taken too long. The child was dead. Jesus, overhearing them, says to Jairus, do not fear, only believe. It's as if Jesus says to Jairus, look, this woman has just shown you what genuine faith looks like, audacious, daring, persistent trust in God. No barrier can constrain God's graceful mercy. Even the barrier between life and death can and will in the end be overcome. Jesus told them that child was only sleeping and sent them all away except for Peter, James, and John and her parents. He took the child by the hand and said, Talitha kum, which meant little girl, get up. And she did just that. She got up. Healing happens in many different forms, physical, emotional, social, spiritual. And we can trust that our mo most daring, faithful effects will be met with God's merciful healing.
healing touch. That is Jesus' message of encouragement. Today we especially pray for that healing touch for our indigenous peoples, for our country, Canada, and for all in need of new life. The good news of the gospel is, even out of the depths, my children take heart, reach out, push through and dare to touch God's garments for God is already reaching out to you and will take your hand and say, Talitha kum, little one, get up. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation with the words, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, still its storms, calm its fears, and make it a witness to your power and justice. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Pakistan. In the Canadian cycle of prayer, we pray for the Right Reverend David Parsons Bishop, the Right Reverend Joey Royal, Annie Itershat, and Lucy Netzer, Suffragan bishop, Bishops and the clergy and people of the Diocese of the Arctic. In our own diocese, we pray for Shane, our bishop, St. Paul's Renfrew, the Reverend Carol Hotz, priest in charge, the parish of West Quebec, St. Paul's Shoreville, Holy, Holy Trinity Radford, Holy Trinity Danford Lake, Christ Church Manawaki Chapel, St. George's Thorn Castle, Thorn Center Chapel, St. James Wright Chapel, St. Stephen's Casabazua, St. John's Moorhead, St. Matthew's Chartery, St. Stephen's Greermount, St. George's Port de France Fort, St. Thomas Bristol, the Venerable Eric Moran, the Reverend Susan Lewis. St. Thomas the Apostle Stittsville, the Reverend Lee Lambert. God of mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We give you thanks for the blessings of your creation. Help us find ways to reverse the damage we have done through carelessness and inattentiveness. God of mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for all who desire peace but experience conflict and for those whose hope for faith in the middle of the whirlwind. God of mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for all those in need, the hungry, the homeless, those in prison, the oppressed, victims of war, and the sick, especially Isabel, Wayne, Julie, Al, Pat, Joan, Marion, Dan, Janet, Isabel, Joe, Michaela, Cindy, John, and any others we pray for silently or aloud this morning. God of mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, you are near to us when we cry out to you. Into your embrace we commend all for whom we pray through Christ, and by the power of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from the Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. Yahweh's people dance for joy, O oh, come before the Lord, and play for him on glad tambourine, and let your trumpet sound. Sing a new song unto the Lord, let a song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord. 
singing alleluia. Rise, O children, from your sleep, your Savior now has come. He has turned your sorrow to joy and filled your soul with song. Sing a new song unto the Lord, let your song be sung for mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing alleluia. Glad my soul, for I have seen the glory of the Lord. The trumpet sounds, the dead shall be raised, I know my Savior lives. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Singing Alleluia. God of wisdom, receive all we offer you this day. Enrich our lives with the gift of your Spirit, that we may follow the way of our Lord Jesus Christ and serve one another in freedom. We ask this in his name. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, wherever you may be, receive Christ. In communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen yet present with us now. Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your life into our hearts. Now we put our lives into your hands. Take us, renew us, remake us. What we have been is past. What we shall be through you still awaits us. Lead us on. Take us with you. In your name we pray. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be God. to God. Thank you for joining us for worship today. We welcome you to join us again next week you can find us on Facebook at the Parish of Mississippi Lake and at St. James Carlton Place. Visit our website, www.stjamescarltonplace.ca, for more information.